Hey everybody, it's me. It's, uh, call this the, uh, midnight edition. It just, uh, hit midnight here in, uh, Leighton, Utah. I, am. Um, I'm still a little shaken up from what I just witnessed. Um, I was driving home late from seeing some people tonight down in, uh, downtown Salt Lake, and, uh, I'm feeling pretty tired, you know, and, uh, I'm anxious to get home. Hey, Matthias. And uh, I'm driving my truck. And I'm coming uh, northbound on I-15, which is our major north-south uh, highway uh, in the Wasatch Valley. I hear you. I hear you. And um, anyways, I'm, you know, I'm feeling pretty tired. You know, I'm watching my speed, and I'm, I'm sober, and I'm coming home and just anxious to get there. And there was this uh, smaller two-door, I'm thinking like a, an older Honda Civic or something, you know. And uh, he was ahead of me. I go, come on, come on. Uh, a lane or two to my left, okay. So I'm like, it's like four or five lanes going northbound, and then there's a center median, and then four or five going, you know, southbound. I'm like in the middle lane, okay, and I'm cruising along. 70, 75 miles an hour, you know, my exit's 330, and I'm coming up on exit 328, and, um, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm tired. Well, this car that was ahead of me, and one or two lanes over to my left, like in the faster lanes, he starts coming across in front of me, no turn signal. Did you get the bug, Matthias? Okay, that explains the madness. Um... He comes across, you know, my vision here. No signal, but slowly progressing. One lane, two lane, three lane, four lane. Now he's all the way over in the slow lane. And in, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, he's just kind of abruptly moving over to the far right lane because he's going to exit, which there was an exit 328 coming up, right? But here's the problem. He kept going. And he went down over the hill, like, I never lost sight of him in this ravine, and when he did that, you know, the only thing I could do is think, start, you know, pumping my brakes for people behind me, and I just started blasting my horn, you know, in my truck, womp, 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 womp. Well, anyways, I'm, you know, as he's down in the grass, and I'm slowing down, now I'm kind of almost parallel with him, and of course, at this point, I realized there's something wrong because it wasn't a blown out tire. So I'm thinking, is the person behind the wheel having a heart attack? Um, you know, maybe somebody fell asleep. What the hell's going on? So anyways, he's still down in the grass, you're going at least 60 miles an hour, and he's starting to bank left as if he's, you know, coming back up towards the highway and just bam, hits this, this stationary street sign and it goes flying and that just crushes the front end of his car but the momentum you know he's still rolling and by this point now he's back up on the highway and skids across four or five lanes and starts to spin to where his car is now facing more southbound hits the median and of course that stops the car and it doesn't push him back into one of the driving lanes it just stops him in the inner shoulder well, of course, I see this, and I veer far left and stop in that shoulder, hit my flashers, put it in the park, I get out of my truck, and I'm working my way back to his car. I, I'm the first one truly on the scene. And I see this person standing outside the passenger door of this two-door car. And I said, were you in this car? And he's like, yeah. And I said, were you the driver? And he's like, yeah. I said, is there anybody else in the car? He said, no. And there was some smoke coming out from under the hood, like steam from, you know, probably when the radiator exploded when he hit that, that sign, but there was no fire. And then another guy showed up and said, hey, look, follow me back, you know, this way. Let's get away from the car. I'm an off-duty police officer. And we're like, yeah, all right, fine. And a couple other people show up, you know, and I'm calling 911, and they were already alerted to what had happened. And I was like, okay, good. So I get him in my truck. And I get in the driver's side, 
and I'm sitting there and I'm talking to him. And then this guy comes up to my driver's window and says, do you have a blanket? I said, no. He says, you know, it's probably best to keep him warm because he's in shock. And I said, I'll crank up the heat. And he goes, okay. So I crank up the heat in my truck, pneumatize. And um, I'm talking to this kid, right? And, you know, I'm totally calm. But my insides are, you know, going a million miles an hour. And I can imagine what's, what's uh, going on with him. And I'm looking at this kid, you know, and he looks like, you know, if I had a son, you know, he could be my son. You know, I'd say early 20s, kind of poofy, reddish blonde, curly hair over about mid-ear, ball cap, shorts to the knee. You know, just a college-age kid, you know. So I, um, you know, I looked at his eyes and they were really red. And I said, you know, what happened, man? He goes, I, I fell asleep, is what happened. I said, okay. I said, you know, are you high right now? And he's like, yeah. I said, I'm not a cop, man. I'm, I'm just, consider me a father figure, you know. And I said, what are you high on, man? And he's like, we, you know, I was just coming from a friend's house, man. And, you know, I fell asleep. I said, yeah. I said, when did you wake up? He said, you know. I kept hearing this horn. I said, I think that was me, dude. And then, and like, I woke up and I hit that sign. And then, you know, next thing you know, I'm flying back in the other direction. I'm like, yeah. So I said, do you have any weed on you? And he's like, no. I said, do you have any in the car? And he goes, yeah, I have some in the trunk. And I said, you know, how much? He goes, enough. Okay. I said, do, do, you, do you hurt right now? Do you, you, know, you think you want an ambulance? He's like, no. And he, went, he wasn't bleeding anywhere. But, um, yeah, it, 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 uh, it's just a lot to take in, you know, because, you know, that's somebody's son, obviously. And, 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 and for me, you know, I'm thinking, if I had a son, you know, that could have been him or something, you know. But, um, you know, I remember thinking back after it all happened, all these 18-wheelers that I was passing, you know, the highway wasn't that busy, but there were there were 18-wheelers on the road, you know. And I, I think I handled the situation pretty well. But um, it could have been a lot worse. Know, and I'm glad it wasn't, and I'm glad I was there. And the, the officer, you know, said, you know, would you like to head home and I can, you know, put the kid in the car? I said, so, you know, you'll see that he gets home. And he's like, oh, yeah, because, you know, my thinking is, you know, I'd get him home, but, you know, he's prob probably going to face some charges for driving under the influence, you know. But that sure as hell beats, you know going home in a hearse or something, man, or a coroner's wagon. And, um, you know, I'm just glad I was there to help. But I'm tired, you know, it's, uh, it's been a day. And uh, I hope this uh, recording finds all you guys at home and safe, you know. Right, Matthias? Right. It's, uh, from Matthias and I hear that uh, you know, we care about people. And uh, stay safe out there, people. You know, it's important. You know, and if you've had too much to drink or you're pretty stoned on some good weed, sit tight, man. Men and women alike, you know, just don't risk anything. Right, Matthias? Okay. Well, Matthias and I say goodnight. We love you guys.